Hi, this is Kendrick with worldmedicalschool.org. We're going to talk about acidosis. This is a topic that is not covered in real depth in most review materials, but it's an important topic and one that will be important, especially in practice. So I'm going to go into just a little bit more depth than review materials usually will go, but uh, there's definitely more to learn about it, so I'll give some other resources to go to after this. So acidosis means low pH in the tissue. It also means just the process of creating more acid. And acidemia is uh, specifically blood pH less than 7.35. And the symptoms of this, the way that most people present, is with some kind of CNS disturbance like confusion up to coma, um, some kind of respiratory disturbance, usually shortness of breath, and... Uh, Tachycardia and GI symptoms are, are real prominent parts of this. Um, so when you order the ABG, the arterial blood gas, which is one of the most important measurements in diagnosing acidosis, well, if you have uh, if you have any of these symptoms, um, then you might want to order it if you don't know what's causing it, or if you have reason to believe that. Uh, one of the causes um, that we're going to talk about in a minute is uh, part of part of your uh, patient's presentation. So, uh, normal pH is around seven point four. Uh, normal PCO two is about forty, and normal bicarb is about twenty four. And we'll we'll talk about how to use these numbers to differentiate between a respiratory and metabolic acidosis. But let's talk a little bit more about. Uh, some of the terms that we use. Acidemia, again, is uh, less than 7.35 blood pH. Gap is, or anion gap, is the difference between measured cations and measured anions. So sodium chloride and bicarb are the, are the uh, ions that we usually measure uh, potassium is sometimes included in this, but most often it's just sodium for the cations. And the, the difference between these is going to equal uh, the, the unmeasured um, cations and the unmeasured anions. So usually we have a greater number of unmeasured anions, and it's... Uh, and the normal number is 11 for our for our gap. So over 11, really uh, over 14, is is where we start talking about uh, increased anion gap. So if you have a, a increased gap, metabolic acidosis, and there's another thing that we can calculate called the delta delta or the delta ratio. And I'm not going to go into super uh, great depth with this. So if you don't understand what I'm saying, uh, there is a great video that you can watch that will just spend 10 minutes going over this one concept, and it's it's really good. So the delta ratio is the change in anion gap over the change in bicarb. So in a, in a gap acidosis, for example, uh, a lactic acidosis, you're adding uh, lactic acid, to the system, so the the lactate is going to be uh, another anion that is going to add to our gap, and then the uh, hydrogen from the lactic acid is going to deplete our bicarb. So normally in a gap acidosis, the change in the gap is going to equal the change in the bicarb. So a pure gapped acidosis is going to be uh, somewhere around uh, 1 to 2 for your delta ratio. Um, if you have a delta ratio that is less than 1, then that means that uh, you have a gap acidosis, but you also have a non-gap acidosis. And um, if your delta delta is greater than 2, then you have a gap acidosis plus a metabolic alkalosis. Again, if this doesn't make a lot of sense, just watch uh, watch this video that I've got a link to here, 
and it will go into a little bit more depth and be be helpful for you. So we got an acidosis. We um, start out by looking at our uh, our um, CO2 levels. So normal is 40. If it's more than 40, then we think respiratory acidosis. So we've got, again, we've got a pH that is less than 7.35. And then we've got um, a, a carbon dioxide that is greater than 40. So we know that um, we're not getting rid of enough carbon dioxide, and that is leading to our acidosis. So some of the causes would be lung disease, uh, a, drugs that might depress our respiratory system, and uh, some kind of a muscular problem that might depress our, our, muscul our respiratory system. If your CO2 is less than 40, then we know it's a metabolic acidosis because that means that um, we... Well, it means it's not a respiratory acidosis, so we're, we're not retaining uh, carbon dioxide. So causes of metabolic acidosis, first let's talk about the gap. So if a normal gap is 11, an increased gap uh, might uh, lead us to think of chronic renal failure, uh, lactate, diabetic ketoacidosis are some of the big ones, and toxins. And a, a normal gap... Uh, will make us think of diarrhea, uh, glue sniffing, I don't know why that was one of the more common ones I included, or renal tubular acidosis. So again, the increased gap is uh, we're adding something to the system like lactate or ketoacidosis where we're adding um, ketones which also are anions. And uh, chronic renal failure um, Intoxication and massive rhabdo are, are all things that can lead to this. Um, and a normal anion gap would be like diarrhea because we're losing bicarb, um, pancreatic fistula, uh, your, your retero sigmoidoscopy, uh, sigmoidostomy, uh, renal tubular acidosis, which we're going to talk about in a different video, intoxication. Um, like uh, ammonium chloride, acetazolamide, uh, bile acid sequestrants, isopropyl alcohol, and renal failure uh, or glue sniffing toluene. So you remember the mnemonic mud piles stands for methanol, uremia, DKA, propylene glycol, uh, INH, lactic acidosis, so lactic acidosis, ethylene glycol or uh, alcohol, and uh, salicylates. So those are the main causes of uh, increased gap acidosis. So the treatment of acidosis, if it's respiratory, you're going to try and get them to breathe better, obviously. You need more oxygen getting into the lungs, so you uh, treat the underlying cause. Often that includes ventilation. If it's a metabolic acidosis, we're also going to treat the underlying ca cause, um, which in the case of DK is going to be giving insulin. Um, fluids and electrolytes are going to be always a part of treatment. And sodium bicarb is also uh, potentially a part of treatment. And um, we, we won't go into detail of when you give it and when you won't. But the mainstay is going to be uh, insulin for DK and then just fluids and electrolytes for, for any uh, metabolic acidosis. All right, uh, thanks to Mikhail Hickstrom for um, the symptoms of acidosis picture. And um, if you want to be involved in this, go to worldmedicalschool.org backslash volunteer or just comment on the video below and help us to make these videos better. And uh, we'll be with you again.